A lot of people have noticed on my YouTube episodes and my Instagram clips, I mainly use 1 8 filler rod. And I get asked sometimes, how come I don't use 332 filler rod? Even for thin stuff like this. Here we're doing an outside corner joint on 1 8 plate. You can see I'm using a TIG rod that some people would might think would be too thick. Well, here's why. What's one of the main things I talk about on my channel as far as something we want to eliminate or avoid with TIG welding? Can you guess? I say it all the time. It's excessive heat input. Excessive heat input is gonna to lead to all kinds of problems. It can cause severe overheating and burning through. It can cause irregularities and inconsistencies to your overall profile and reinforcement, as well as a bunch of other things that are gonna be really hard to deal with when you're TIG welding in the middle of a pass. One of the most important things I teach my students in my online TIG welding program is how important our filler material is to the equation. We can actually use these little things here to soak up some of the heat. It's gonna help us to control some variables as well as shape and profile of our weld. Now again, this is a personal preference, but the reason I prefer not to use 332 TIG rod is simply because there usually isn't enough filler material to put into each dab as I move. And unfortunately, without adequate filler material to each dab, I'm not going to be able to control the heat as efficiently as I could personally using 1 8 TIG rod. I want things to be hot enough that I can always ensure proper penetration and heat input to what I'm doing. So when I'm running a little hotter on something like this, trying to really dig in, I wanna make sure that not only do I have enough heat to fully punch in, but I also need to make sure that I can control and counteract this heat with adequate filler material. When using a smaller diameter TIG rod, I'll have to dab a couple times or push a little bit more filler into the weld pool each step. If I don't do so, I'm gonna end up with a slightly hollow or concave pass. And if we have this problem, it's gonna lead to somebody overheating pretty quickly. Take a look at this photo here. This is something that obviously has gotten a little bit hot as we can see, it has overheated due to lack of filler material. Now, the one thing we wanna do with a joint like this is we don't wanna reduce our heat because if we reduce our heat with a joint like this, we're not gonna burn in and we're not gonna achieve adequate penetration. The other thing we can do if we're using a smaller diameter TIG rod is we could push more filler material in each step. Now, in doing so, perhaps we might fill it up a little bit more, but in something like this, it's hard to gauge how much you're pushing in each step. So, unfortunately, most people are gonna to run to inconsistencies with their overall reinforcement. So in this case, I'm always gonna use 1 8 rod. This way I can crank up my heat a little bit hotter. I can let my welding punch in a little further for better penetration, better heat input. And then I'm gonna counteract this heat input by adding adequate filler material. Each dab of filler material as you move along is gonna help you to counteract the heat that you put into a workpiece. This is why something like a butt weld can be punched in with good penetration, but controlled by adequate filler material. Using enough heat for good penetration plus inadequate filler material, it's gonna leave you with a hollow pass. And it's gonna overheat as you move towards the end. Remember, filler is chiller. I should make that a t-shirt as well. Having inadequate filler material is gonna give you way more to pay attention to, especially when I wanna be focusing intently on details like profile, stepping consistency, all that stuff that really matters. Confidently knowing what each dab of filler material is gonna do for me, that's gonna help out with all the details I just mentioned. So for some stuff, I actually will use 332 rod, but it's not very often. We can see here I have some 1 16th material or 1.6 millimeter. This stuff is pretty thin. Doing something like a corner to corner joint like I am here, I will use a thinner rod for it. However, you can see I am really hitting it with some heat. I wanna make sure that I get through to the other side for proper penetration and I can only counteract the amount of heat that I am putting into it by adding an adequate amount of filler rod. So you could probably make an argument that I even should be using a thinner rod than 332. However, because I'm hitting it with an adequate amount of filler to really punch through to the other side, I'm gonna use this 332 rod in this case to make sure that I counteract the amount of heat with proper filler. Now, another thing I can actually do when I'm using a thinner rod, I've done this on my channel before, I'll do something that I call double tapping. So I am doing single taps like I usually do with thicker rod. However, with a thinner one here, when I do double taps, I'm actually filling it up a little more adequately to what I need. It's kind of a sneaky way to get around this problem if all you have in your shop is thinner rod. Controlling your heat and profile is absolutely one of the most important things you need to know, especially as you're first learning and learning how to fine tune a lot of these details. Jumping ahead too far with what you're trying to learn can lead you to miss details that are really important when you start to work on more advanced stuff like the stuff we learn in my program. This episode here is gonna give you the most important things I need my students to pay attention to and work on. Be sure to hit this episode next and you will have a great idea of what you're looking for. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger. For Pacific Arc TIG Welding, my name is Dusty. Phil and chill. We will talk soon. Peace.